moment Captain Steve's helicopter descended into the eerie silence of the forest, he knew this search and rescue was different. The abandoned backpack near Bear Creek was the first sign, but what they found deeper in the woods would haunt them all. A brutal reminder that nature, near when crossed, could be more deadly than they'd ever imagine. The rhythmic thrum of the helicopter blades cut through the air, reverberating across the endless forest below. Hello folks, this is Steve, a retired military helicopter pilot. I flew hundreds of missions and this one had a bad ending. This happened in the 1980s. Captain Steve, a seasoned search and rescue pilot with over a two decades of experience, scanned the vast wilderness with practiced eyes. The late afternoon sun cast long shadows over the treetops and the radio crackled as the voice of the search coordinator broke the silence. Base to Echo 1, we've got a confirmed sighting of a vehicle abandoned near Bear Creek Trail. Victim is a 35-year-old hiker gone missing three days ago, last seen heading toward the trailhead alone. Be advised there's been increased bear activity in the area. Uh, Monroe's heart sank bears. He'd been in the air for hundreds of rescues, everything from lost children to stranded mountaineers. But bear attacks always carried an eerie weight. Copy base heading to the coordinates now. In the back of the helicopter, the crew medics, Sarah and Spotter Travis, were on high alert. They knew the stakes. The wilderness had a way of hiding things, and when a bear was involved, time wasn't on anyone's side. As they approached Bear Creek Trail, the dense canopy opened up, revealing a winding path that disappeared into the deep woods. Steve circled the area, slowly, eyes peeled for any sign of movement. It was quiet, too quiet. There. Travis called out, pointing to a break in the trees near the creek. A backpack torn and scattered lay at the edge of the water. Steve lowered the chopper landing in a small clearing nearby. The crew disembarked quickly, rifles slung over their shoulders for safety. Then they saw it. The body lay just beyond the creek, partially concealed by ferns and foliage. What was once a man was now a brutal reminder of nature's raw, untamed power. His torso was torn open, limbs scattered, and deep gashes marked his body, clear signs of a bear attack. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. She knelt beside the remains, her gloved hand trembling slightly as she checked for anything they could bring back to the victim's family, a piece of identification. Something to tell them they'd found him, but there was nothing, just, just devastation. Steve stood a few feet back, his face pale but hardened by years of witnessing the worst nature had to offer. Travis scanned the perimeter, keeping an eye on the tree line. The bear could still be nearby. We need to get out of here. Sarah said softly, rising to her feet. There's nothing we can do for him now. Steve nodded, feeling the heavy weight of responsibility settle in his chest. Search and rescue missions didn't always end with triumph. They turned back toward the helicopter, the hum of the rotors offering a strange sense of comfort. As they lifted off, Steve took one last glance at the scene below. A patch of wilderness forever marked by the violence of nature. He had seen death before. He had flown through storms, rescued people from cliffs, and plucked them from icy waters. But this, this was different. This was the raw, savage truth of the wild, a reminder that out here, they weren't always the ones in control. The radio crackled again as they soared back toward the base. Echo One, did you locate the victim? Steve paused before replying, his voice low and steady. Base, this is Echo One. We found him. It's over. If you want to see more gripping stories like this, subscribe and follow us for the latest updates. Thank you for watching. We will put weekly videos based on my experience.